Hello and welcome to Lovely English Stories. Thank you for stopping by. This story is written for upper intermediate English learners. Ready? Let's get started. B2 English Story A Day in My Life I don't know why, but it's usually assumed that if you are not working, you must lead a life of leisure. If I say that I work harder now than when I was in paid employment, no one believes me. Everyone thinks that I sit all day watching television. I wish. My day usually starts between 6.30 and 6.45 a.m., I rise at this time because I need peace and quiet before the riot squad get up. I drink a mug of tea and take a hot shower before I can function. I don't look or feel my best first thing in the morning. When my daughter was about five, she came to me very early in the day and asked, Mummy, why do you look so raggy in the morning? As ten years have elapsed since then, I can only assume that I must now appear like Dracula's daughter, or mother, before the hour of ten. At 7.50am precisely, I wake up Annabelle. She looks like an angel when she's asleep. I smile to myself, make the most of the picture. Chaos will reign when I wake her. She's like a whirlwind preparing to leave for school. Everything is timed with military precision. At exactly 8.26am she leaves the house, but not before she's complained about how she looks. This is from a girl who would still be stunning dressed in a bin liner. Still, that's teenagers for you. At 8.28am she's back. I've forgotten my sandwiches. Why didn't you remind me? She screams. I try to hide my amusement. She's just like I was at her age. All aggression. She's boy band crazy. From morning until night, the various groups' vibrant tones can be heard throughout the house. If they're on TV, hysteria possesses her. I don't know how we'll calm her down when she sees her favourite group live in concert in a few months. The suspense is killing her. When her friends are around, they sometimes wail and scream when throwing themselves around the room, dancing to the music's beat. <laughs> Typical teenagers. Next come both Pauls. My son cannot comprehend why I named him after his father. Neither can I now, as it sometimes makes life a little complicated. My husband recently answered the landline to be given the time and place to meet a very attractive young lady. The poor girl was so embarrassed when she realised that she was speaking to the dad of the family and not the more appealing son. Thankfully, his mobile has now been repaired, so no more mix-ups. I think it must have been the shock of actually bearing a child which sent my brain to my feet for a few months. Anyway, by the time the fog had cleared, it was too late to change Paul Adam's name, as he is known to us, so we live with the repercussions. When father and son have departed each morning, the former to work, the latter to university, peace reigns. I love the house when it is quiet. After my breakfast, I begin the housework. I don't mind doing the chores, except the cleaning of one room which I enter with trepidation, the one belonging to my son. Charred toast, Half-eaten snacks, dirty mugs, plates, discarded sweet wrappers and a glass of soured milk greet me today. 
I am not impressed and leave the mess for I'm too busy, Paul, to tidy. In between university, a part-time job, homework and social life, he does have a busy lifestyle, but it is no excuse for being untidy. At lunchtime, Annabelle and two friends arrive. She's going to the junior firefighters tonight and needs her uniform. All three reluctantly return to school. It's mathematics for most of the afternoon. So they are not happy. Half an hour later, my sister calls. She's full of the woes of the world as usual. For an hour, she sits moaning about her life while I try to listen sympathetically. Eventually, she cheers up and leaves with a smile on her face. Later, after dinner, I motivate myself and prepare for evening class. Between studying, homework, work placement and housework, I rush, forever watching the clock. When I return, it's to cries of... Mum, will you help me with my homework? Mum, have I got a clean shirt? Mum, Grandma has phoned to ask if you'll go to the hospital with her. So much for a life of leisure. Now let's go through some of the intermediate vocabulary from this story. Appealing. Appealing. If something is appealing, it is attractive or interesting. Assume. To assume. To assume is to accept something to be true without question or proof. Chaos. Chaos. If something is in chaos, it is in a state of total confusion with no order. Impress. To impress. If you impress someone, you cause them to admire or respect you, or perhaps both. Latter. Latter. If something is at the latter end, it means it is near or towards the end of something. Precisely. Precisely means exactly. Rush. To rush. To rush is to go or to do something very quickly. Let's go through some advanced English words from the story. Aggression. Aggression. Aggression is an angry feeling that makes you want to attack or defeat someone else. Chore. Chore. A chore is a job or piece of work that is often boring or unpleasant but needs to be done regularly. For example, ironing is a chore. Rain. To rain. In this story, to rain means to be the main feeling or quality in a situation or person. Reluctantly. Reluctantly. If you do something reluctantly, it shows that you are not willing to do it and are therefore slow to do it. Elapsed. Elapsed. If time elapses, it goes past. Moan. To moan. To moan is to complain. Suspense. Suspense. Suspense is excitement or worry that you feel when you are waiting to find out what has happened or perhaps what will happen. We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story and the vocabulary explanations. Thank you for stopping by and don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Get productive and check out our language learning productivity packs and stories on Etsy. You can find the link in the description box below. Use code YouTube10 for 10% off. See you soon.